Okay, looks like it's time to get started. Uh, thank you everyone for joining our workshop today. Uh, my name is Isaac, I'll be the instructor for the workshop. And uh, the topic we're gonna go over today is Node and Express. So uh, to get started, let's go ahead and start off by talking about Node. So first thing we should understand about Node is how a server works. Okay, and it's basically made up of three main components. Uh, we've got you know, a, a client, the server, and the database. Okay, and the server acts as the middle layer between the client and the database. And, and how it works is we send requests from our client um, to our server, and then uh, depending on what kind of request we send, our server carries out a specific action to our database. And then depending on if that action is successful or not, we send back a response. Uh, to our client letting them know that you know it went through or didn't um, and, and that's you know the basic protocol uh, in which a, a server works okay and node.js is going to provide a server environment for our JavaScript code so why are we using node uh, the, the uh, simple answer is um, it allows us to use uh, one language across the entire stack so uh, before Node came along, you would see a stack similar to what you see here. Is you would have a JavaScript client side, and then you know mix it with maybe a Ruby or a .NET you know, server side. And and while that worked, um, it made it harder, of course, for the developer uh, to build the full stack because they would have to then learn multiple languages. Okay, so uh, when Node came around, it really changed the name of the game because many uh, developers loved programming the JavaScript on the client side already, so to be able to do it on the server uh, really, really uh, broke new ground. So one of the most unique parts about Node is something called Node modules, okay? And how you can think about Node modules is uh, very much like Legos, okay? So with Legos, we, we take them right brick by brick and, and we just kind of scaffold together uh, a structure. And, and that's uh, very much how a node project works, is instead of reinventing the wheel and coding everything from scratch ourselves, we can simply go into what's called an NPM registry, which is full of all these different modules which do different things. And we can just download those specific modules in our app, and that way, again, we don't have to reinvent the wheel ourselves and we could save a, a lot of time. So uh, to view and, and, and download uh, these uh, modules, you can go to npmjs.com. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and let's code with some Node. So first thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to go to nodejs.org. You're gonna need to make sure that you install Node. And you're gonna wanna install the LTS version and not the current version. Okay, and the reason is because the current version, uh, they haven't discovered all the bugs working out yet, uh, whereas the LTS version they have, okay? And so after you install Node, uh, you can verify it's been installed in your machine um, by going to your command line, and then you can just type in node-v, and it will tell you which version you have. So uh, from there, uh, as well as um, Node being installed, uh, you will also have installed NPM, and NPM stands for Node Package Manager. Uh, and that's the tool which we're gonna be using to install these Node modules within our application. Okay, and so you can verify you have NPM as well by running you know, the similar command npm v Okay, so once you verify that you do have those technologies on your machine and they're installed ready to go, uh, from there, we can go ahead and we can create a, a new project to run some code in. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change directories onto my desktop. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project folder on my desktop, okay? And uh, this project folder, let's go ahead and let's give it a name. Uh, we'll go ahead and call it uh, our backend, okay? And then from here, we'll go ahead and change directories into our backend folder. And then we'll open it up uh, inside the text editor. And I'll be using uh, Visual Studio. And so we open up our backend folder here. 
You can see right now, you know, it's just a, a, an empty folder. So I'm going to go ahead and start by adding a new file and I'll call it my server.js file. Okay. And uh, from here, we can go ahead and uh, we can run any, you know, normal JavaScript code we would normally run in our browser. So for example, uh, we could go ahead and we could write uh, console.log, we could say hello world. And you'll notice I don't have an index HTML or anything, right? I don't have this loading in the browser anyway. I'm actually going to be executing it using my server. And to do that, I simply need to run the keyword node. And then I'll target the script I want to run, which at this time is our server.js. Okay, and you'll notice that it executed that script just like a browser would. Okay, and, and once again, this is the beauty of Node, is you don't have to learn, you know, an entirely new language when you go from the client side to the server side. You pretty much use what you know already. You know, Node is simply an environment for us to run our JavaScript code on the server. Okay, so now we understand that. Let's go ahead and let's head over to npmjs.com and let's see how we can use some of these Node modules within our project. Okay, so we come to npmjs.com. And from here, you can search uh, the different packages. And one package I'll uh, look up is called Moment. Okay, and, and Moment is a really famous package uh, for its ability to, to parse and, and work with dates. Because uh, normally in JavaScript, working with dates can be a big headache. And so Moment comes in and really makes that easy for us. Okay, and so as you can see, they immediately give you the installation directions here, right? They say you can just run this command, it will install it into your project. Okay, but before I run that command, what I want to do is I want to initialize what's called a package.json file in my root directory. And that way, for each installation I run, I can then track it to that file. And if I'm sharing my project with others later, I don't have to share all my modules. I can just share this, this reference file and they can install them from there. So to initialize this file, I'm going to run npm init in my root directory. From here, it's going to ask me a series of different questions. And normally in like a professional project, you know, where it's for, you know, customers and all that kind of stuff, you would, you know, want to do your due diligence and build this up. But at this time, it's really just a practice, you know, project. So I'm just going to hit enter and use, you know, just pretty much blank for, for all of these. And again, this, this is just metadata. It's not affecting how our app is running at all. It's just information about our app. Okay. The main thing I wanted out of this is, is now, when I install packages, I can track them inside this file here. And here's how we can do this. First, we take the base command to install the package, such as npm i moment. And then for my root directory, I'll go ahead and run that command. But at the very end of the command, I'm going to run hyphen hyphen save. And what that's going to do is it's going to track it to my package.json here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see that in action. So as we can see, now we have dependencies here, right? And that's showing us, you know, the uh, moment that was just installed. And then we have our node modules here, right? And node modules has our moment package inside. Okay. So now that we've installed moment, we can now uh, import it and, and use the code uh, within our server here. Okay. So if we come back and we go to the documentation here, we can see it tells us for Node.js, we just have to install it, which we just did. And then we have to do what's called importing it. Okay, and this required keyword in, in Node.js will import a given package by its name. And we'll assign it to a variable, which we can then use through our code. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this right on over to our server.js. Okay, and then this second line here is, is using uh, the moment library uh, to print out today's date. Okay, so to visibly be able to you know see that, we're gonna go ahead. I'll throw that inside of a console log statement. Okay, so now whenever we run this code, it should print out today's date. So let's go ahead and test that out. Save all, and we'll run node server JS. Okay, and as we can see, it was able to print out you know today's date. And we didn't have to do any of the heavy lifting, right? We just installed the package, used the reference code, and it, it worked right away. Okay? 
And uh, this is why Node has gained such big popularity in such a short amount of time. Uh, is because developers uh, can much more rapidly develop uh, backends of applications than they could before, uh, because you know they were stuck doing everything from scratch. And, and now we've got this open source community where everyone shares everything. Uh, we can simply use other people's code in our own projects, and uh, our end users are none the wiser. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and reference the docs and, and let's see if you know if we wanted to use this for you know. A purpose beyond the initial example here. How would we do that? Okay, so come down here to to parse, right? And uh, after we, you know, we've you know brought it in and imported it. Now um, we can parse the date uh, for many different formats. Okay, so as you can see, they say you can parse a string date into an actual date right here. So let's just try this, right? So we'll save all. And then instead of console logging, you know, today's day, I'm just going to console log day. And what this should do is it should take this plain string and it should parse it into an actual JavaScript date. Okay, so we'll save all. And we'll run node server JS. Okay, and as we can see, you know, it's taken our, our string date and parsed it into a, a real date. Okay. And so that's just one example of one module we can use on the NPM registry. There are literally hundreds of thousands, uh, if not millions by this point, uh, of modules that you can install, which do everything from parsing dates uh, to running you know, cron jobs, encryptions for passwords. I mean, you name it. Uh, people have pretty much wrote a module for it already. And okay? so in a nutshell, that is uh, how the node ecosystem works as we write JavaScript code on the server which executes using you know these these building blocks known as node modules. So uh, now we've covered that let's go ahead and uh, let's move on and uh, let's go ahead and let's talk about Express. Okay so uh, Express is going to be our server-side framework uh, which is going to allow us to set up an API. Uh, and an API stands for Application Programming Interface. And the simplest way to explain that is it's a series of publicly exposed endpoints uh, on our server, which allow us uh, to send requests, communicate with our server, and carry out different operations. Okay, so in, in the given diagram, you see the client sends a request to the server. Um, but it can be a, one of, of these uh, four different kinds of requests. Okay. Uh, it can be a get request, post request, put request, or delete request. Okay, and each request will carry out a different operation with our database. Okay, so when you think of a get request, um, we're, we're requesting information from our server, right? And so uh, that would be more than likely if we wanted to display something on the page, um, you know, from the database, we would do a get request to our server. However, if maybe a user is signing up and they're posting form data, we'd want to do a, a post request and send that you know, request body to our server. And then if we wanted to update you know, and, and edit some information in our database, we would do a put request. And if we wanted to remove that data, we would do a delete request. Okay? And so uh, as you can see here, each uh, uh, method is going to have a, a different endpoint we can hit. right? And, and given endpoints, um, can look very much like file names, um, but don't get confused. They, they aren't. They don't have anything to do with your file structure. Um, they just simply use the backslash system to, you know, separate, you know, sources and categories and such. Okay, so let's go ahead and code it and see this in action. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do is go and remove our, our moment code, and then let's go to mtmjs. Okay. And within npm.js, let's go to uh, Express. As you can see, there it is, Express package. Okay, and from here, we'll go ahead just like we did with uh, Moment, and we'll install Express. Okay, then I'll go ahead and throw hyphen hyphen save at the end uh, to track it to the package.json here.
Okay. So uh, now that we have uh, Express installed, next, if we go back to uh, the package here, you can see they give us, you know, some reference code to quickly set up and then start our Express server. Okay. So let's go ahead and copy this code, paste it in our server, and now let's talk about each line. Okay, so this first line here is importing the Express module and it's assigning that value to this variable. Okay, and then this uh, variable here, app, is uh, creating a new instance of Express application. Okay, and then down here, you see an API setup, okay? And this is an API endpoint, just with you know, the, the root, um, and, and a get request is, is being made to this endpoint, okay? So request is sent in and response is sent back and that response is just gonna be this string hello world. And finally, you can see down here, we have our app listening in on port 3000. So in short, uh, your computer has you know, several different development ports that you can use. Um, and you can see different developers, you different ones. Um, but at the end of the day, just know that it's private to your local computer, right? No one in the, on the internet can visit that port except you okay and that's why we're going to be using this uh, in development so uh from here to run this code we could go ahead and save all and we can come back to our uh, command line here and we'll run node server js okay and as you can see here unlike our previous commands instead of exiting it just hangs there kind of like it's frozen um, but this is a good sign. That means our server is connected and it's listening in on that port for any incoming requests. Okay. And so how we're going to be making our request to this endpoint is by using a tool called Postman. If you don't have Postman installed, you can get it real easy and free by going to getpostman.com. Okay. And uh, once it's installed, we can go ahead and open that up. And from here, we can specify, you know, a given method here and then a given endpoint here. Okay, so as we can see, my given method is, is a get request. And my given uh, endpoint is localhost 3000 at the root. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in uh, local, or sorry, HTTP localhost 3000. Okay, send this off. And as you can see, we get a response sent back which matches the response we have coded here. Okay, so we successfully just communicated with our server. Okay, and so from here, let's go ahead and let's add some data to our server and we, that way we can send back something a little more realistic. Okay, so I'm just gonna create uh, some movie data. Okay, so I'll just say movies. And we'll have a title for each movie. We'll just say maybe one is Star Wars. Uh, and we'll have a genre for each movie. And then we'll just say this is a uh, fantasy. And then um, the second movie, we'll just say uh, Fast and Furious. And we'll make that action. Okay, so now we've got an array of uh, movies. Uh, instead of just sending back a string, let's go ahead and send back uh, that array. Okay. And then instead of just hitting the root endpoint, let's hit something that's a little more intuitive. So I'm gonna say get slash movies and send back the movies array. So from here, let's go ahead and save all and let's try to hit this endpoint in Postman. So we cut our server connection and, and refresh to pick up on those changes. And then from here, we go back to Postman and we make a uh, get request to the send endpoint here and uh, oops, oh, yes, that's right. We, we added movies, right? So we'll say get Google's 3000 slash movies, right? And as we can see here, it sends back the array of movies, which we created in our database, okay? So from here, we can go ahead and set up uh, the other operations. Uh, so that would be post, put, and delete, which will allow us to add new movies, update old movies and also remove them. Okay, so uh, next we'll do is um, post, okay? And uh, before we set this up, we're gonna need to install a, a package called Body Parser because Express is an unopinionated, unopinionated framework. So what that means is 
it doesn't uh, it doesn't know if we're going to use Node.js or Python or, or whatever else, right? Express works with multiple different path sets. So at the end of the day, um, the data we're working with might not be in JSON format. So we need to tell Express to use uh, JSON data. So how we're going to do this is I'm going to go to my server. I'm going to run npm install body dash parser hyphen hyphen save. Okay, so now we've installed body parser. What I can do up here is I can bring in the body parser package saying require body dash parser. Now I've brought that in, I can uh, tell Express to use JSON format. So I'll say app.use body parser dot JSON. Okay, so now all requests will be parsed into JSON format. So down here, I'll go ahead and set up a post request for the movies endpoint. And then when this endpoint is hit, we'll run a function. And from here, this function will take the request body and we're going to push that into this array of movies. Okay, so I'm gonna say movies.push and we'll say rec.body. And after we push that movie into our array, we'll then send back the array of movies. So we'll say res.send movies. So uh, to test this out, we'll save all, and we will uh, refresh our server. And then we go back to Postman, and we'll run a post request to the movies endpoint. We'll add a body, and this body will be raw, and it will be JSON format. And so I'll go ahead and I'll put a title, and I'll say Friday the 13th. And then I'll go ahead and I'll add a genre, and I'll say horror. Okay, so now I hit send, and we can see that it sends it, hits that endpoint, pushes that into the array of already existing movies and then sends back the new array. So not only do I have my two original movies, but now I have added this third one, okay? So uh, from here, let's go ahead and let's talk about how we can set up a put request to update this movie data, okay? So I'm just gonna start by saying app.put and then I'll hit the movies endpoint I'm going to do one thing extra here. I'm going to add what's called a request parameter. And the request parameter is just a string that we append to the end of our request URL here. And uh, it's simply going to allow me to target the title of a, a given movie and, and update the title based on that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run a for loop to loop through my movies. So I'll say for let i equal zero, i will be less than movies dot length, and then I will increase one each loop. And then we'll run a conditional statement while we're in the loop, which will compare movies at the index of I dot title to the request parameter title being sent over. And if they match, well, then we will take the new title from the request body and we'll update the old title. So we'll say movies the index of i dot title equals rec dot body dot new title. And then if it doesn't match, we'll just continue to the next iteration of the loop. And from there, once we've assigned a new title, we'll send back a response with the new movies. So we save all and we refresh our browser, or not our browser, our server, <laughs> and I'll pick up on our, our changes. Uh, and now we go back to Postman, and we change this from a post request to a put request, and I will target uh, the Star Wars uh, movie, and then um, I will provide the Star Wars movie with a new title. And we will just say, uh, I, 
don't know, maybe Little Mermaid. <laughs> okay, so that's our new title for our, our uh, movie Star Wars here. Just do a lower case here. There we go. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and hit send here. And as we can see, we're sent back the two movies, except now Star Wars has been changed to Little Mermaid. That's because you know we sent over this you know, request parameter and it found that title that matched it inside the array and it updated it with our new title information we sent over on the request body. Okay, so last, let's talk about how we can add a delete request to remove a movie from our, our array. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say app.delete and then I will hit the movies endpoint and I will pass a request parameter with the movie title I want to delete. From here, I'm gonna start off by doing a for loop. So I'll loop through the array of movies. And then while I'm looping through the array of movies, I'll compare movies with the index of i dot title to the request params title. And if they match, well, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna splice out the movie at that index. Okay, so we'll say movies dot splice. We'll splice them out at the index of i and the quantity of one. Otherwise, if it doesn't match, we'll just continue to the next iteration of the movie. So from here, we'll go ahead and we'll save all. And we will refresh our server, pick up on those changes. And from here, we can go ahead and go back to Postman. We can run a delete request. And we'll target the movie Star Wars to delete. We'll send that off. And oops, looks like it's just hanging there, All right? So let's go ahead and cancel this, go back to our code, and uh, let's see what I did wrong here. Uh, okay, uh, we're hitting our delete endpoint. Yep, and it's comparing our request title. Okay, and the last thing I needed to do here is I didn't send back a response. That's what I missed here, right? So I just need to send back the new array of movies. And, and so from here we'll say ball, and we'll refresh our server, pick up on those changes. And then from here we'll send off the same request. You can see this time, it sends back a response, and it, it has removed the movie Star Wars, as we sent over, and the only movie left is no fast and furious. Okay. So once again, this is referred to as an API, an application programming interface. And it simply allows a developer to interact you know, with a server, right, and carry out different operations depending on the kind of requests that are sent over. So uh, a lot, you know, a lot of uh, material. So let's go ahead and Let's um, you know open the floor and you know see if anyone has you know any questions over uh, what we've been over. So, if you have questions, feel free to ask them now. Nope, oh, I'm uh, I'm good. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, okay, so yeah, I don't think anyone has any. Any other questions? So uh, if that's the case, thank you everyone for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the workshop today. Um, you know, if you need anything else to uh, come up later, uh, go ahead and just, you know, shoot me a message and we'll go from that. Have a good one. Cool. Thanks, Isaac. Have a good one. <laughs>